All right. Hello, everyone. We are live at the Step Zen stream. Super happy to have Facundo Giuliani with us here. Oh, that is not what we want. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us who you are. Cool. So thank you for the invitation. Uh, yeah, my name is Facundo Giuliani. I'm from Argentina. I live in Buenos Aires. Uh, I'm the developer relation uh, engineer at Storyblock. Uh, I'm part of the developer experience team. Um, yes, I mean, I'm the developer. I worked as a developer for almost 15 years, probably. And now I changed my path. And I'm uh, working on developer relations, on developer advocacy, and I don't know, uh, taking my first steps uh, in this uh, in this new world for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And you and I got to know each other through the general Jamstack world. You're actually a listener of my podcast, FS Jam, which is really really cool. We have an episode on the on the docket that we've already recorded that will be going out sometime in the next couple of weeks. And it's great that you're involved in this whole dev advocate, dev relations, dev experience kind of world. This is something we talked about a little bit on the podcast is there's this whole big bucket that I kind of define as like dev rel. And then I think of specific jobs within the dev rel space, some of which mm -hmm. are more community focused, some are more like tooling focused, and then some are kind of a weird intersection between the two. So how do you think of like your specific role within this larger bucket of DevRel? Yeah, I would say probably my role is more related to the community to uh, create and generate content and share that with the community. Uh, well, try to, to attend and to speak at events, conferences um, in, I mean, at Storyblock, uh, we uh, not divide because it's the same area and the same team, but we have uh, some developer experience um, members, let's say, and some developer relations member. And the developer experience uh, engineers are more focused on creating integrations with other systems. I mean, Storyblock with other tools, with other um yeah, services, frameworks, and etc. And um, probably the developer uh, relation engineers are more about um, generating content, um, trying to uh, link the developers with the product, or making, uh, trying to make the the life uh, easier for the developers that are going to use, uh, in this case, Storyblock, and well, trying to spread the word about uh, the headless CMS and and the content it, itself. Um, I mean, um, the, the meaning of, of the headless CMS, uh, what it is, what's the benefit uh, of a headless CMS comparing to a traditional content management system or a different way of managing the content in your application. And yes, I, I think that probably my role is more focused on the generation of content. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's the thing that I find that I enjoy the most at my role is I really enjoy like explaining tech. Like the building the tech is is also fun and building like for me, I like building self-contained examples that like show how something works on like a, a bigger level. So that's the idea of a lot of these kind of streams we do is we like take a very simple proof of concept and build out to show how this stuff works and when we get into like what is Storyblock, what is a headless CMS? If you're a developer, you probably know what it is because it's like a big trend in the industry right now. But for anyone who may have not heard the term, how would you describe like first let's let's say what is a CMS and then how is a headless CMS different from a CMS? Cool. So uh, a CMS is a content management system. Let's say that it's an application that helps uh, not only the developers, but the content creators to uh, manage and create content and maintain it, and also use that um, content in the case of the traditional, let's say traditional, uh, I mean, I, I will handle that term, but the traditional uh, CMSs were focused on the web. Um, some examples of these traditional uh, CMSs are WordPress, Drupal, um, that you can use them uh, to, on one hand, you have uh, an, an admin panel, let's say, or, or a backend that the content creators can use to generate content, to create content, create articles, create different um, 
pieces of content that they will be used in the front end of our web application or our website. And well, what WordPress, let's say an, an example offers is the complete platform that like you have the backend to generate the content and uh, some integrations uh, already made uh, in the front end that you can use to display the content with the style that you want with, with the i mean the the html uh, format or content that you want and it's so it's like a full stack solution in the sense that there's a back end exactly and like a front end yeah. exactly exactly that will be like the i mean the the concept of the content management system was born in that way the the thing is that um in, in this case wordpress for instance uh the first uh the traditional content management system uh, were uh, forcing the developers to use searching technologies for the front end. So in the case of WordPress, for instance, if you want to create uh, a website or a web application to consume the content that you are creating uh, in the backend, you are forced to use PHP in this case. So that, that PHP is a Anything server but site. That. Well, I, I mean, those are options that you have, and it's uh, we are not going to discuss that. That I mean, that, that's not the yeah, focus no, of, no, of no this PHP session. No PHP hate. <laughs> just, just a little joke there. No PHP hate. Here. No, 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 no. I, I, I mean, that's an election. My, my point is that you are forced to, to use PHP. Um, so, if you wanted to create a website or, or, or a web application, the the alternative to use the, the content generated in the backend was using PHP, the language PHP. Um, the concept of uh, headless CMS appear trying to, um, how to say, make more flexible that idea that you are not uh, forced to use a certain uh, framework or a certain programming language. Um, so the, the headless CMS would be the backend part that we mentioned before that allows the content um, the content creators to manage and to create the content and after that exposing the content to the developers let's say uh, in a form of for instance an api that you can consume from your application the, what i mean what this is offering is not only that you can use any uh, programming language or technology that you want to create a web uh, application or a web project, but also what is offering you is the possibility to consume that content in other types of, of application, like for instance, a mobile application or I don't know, uh, a smart device application that you want to use. Um, there's an example that we have in Storyblock site in the blog. Uh, one uh, of our team members created a, a tutorial about how to consume the, the content created in Storyblock from Alexa and an integration with Alexa. So that's a possibility that appears because uh, you are not forced to use a certain programming language or a certain technology for the front end of your application. And would you say that's possible because you have APIs that you can access Storyblock through? Uh, I would say that that's the reason. The, the reason that, I mean, you can... You can store and you can manage and deliver the content in different ways. But but having an API is a way of um, giving the possibility to the developers to consume the application from any part, any any technology platform that the developers create. Yeah, it's definitely the the A in Jamstack and JavaScript APIs markup. Even though the the acronym is kind of being phased out, I still think. That it's a, it's a useful way to think about this stuff. And you as, as well as myself, we exist in this space of the, the API really. And it's yeah. cool because I think of things like headless CMSs as like backends as a service kind of like they're not in the sense that you can just create whatever kind of backend you want and spin up a Docker container and whatever, but it's owning the the data layer itself and it's saying like we're going to handle your data we're going to make sure that it's saved and it's backed up and it's durable and it's highly available and that you can grab that data and then once you have it you can do whatever you want with it you can play in your front end and you can create any sort of visuals any sort of front end you want with it but you are owning like the back end layer right yeah yeah exactly and in fact 
probably that's more related to to the Jamstack, the concept of, of the Jamstack and the way of creating web applications with the Jamstack. Um, because one of the, or, or I think one of the main ideas uh, of the Jamstack movement is trying not to worry about how to maintain an application and focusing on uh, creating and, and what generates more value to your product. So if you don't really need to, to handle or, or to maintain a platform where your content creators can create the content and then deliver it and consume it from your front end, you can uh, use a service like Storyblock, for instance, that the only thing that you have to do is to link Storyblock platform to your application or the front end of your application and uh, um, let the, the content uh, creators to, to use the Storyblock uh, control panel an application to create the content that you will consume in your front end in the way that you want. So again, as not uh, as you are not tied to use a certain programming language or technology, you can use something, for instance, uh, another, uh, let's say, uh, how to say, popular member of the Jamstack movement are the uh, static site generators. So you can grab content and information uh, calling the API of your headless CMS and generate static pages that you will use um, in your web application. So let's say, I don't know, a, a simple example that I'm thinking now, but uh, let's say a blog site. You, you want to maintain your blog and you are creating articles and, and blog posts. The thing is that using a traditional CMS that forced you to use PHP for, for that use case and, and, and for that application, what you are doing there is server-side rendering your uh, blog post page whenever a new user is visiting your site. And the thing is that a blog post is, uh, I, I mean, a blog post is created using text and other static assets like images, videos, and etc. And you don't really need to render the page from the ground whenever a user is visiting it. You can, like, uh, save the static version of that page in a host, uh, in a, um, I mean, in, in a hosting service, and the user can visit this static asset that can be cached, and uh, so that will make uh, it to, to be even faster. And, and I mean, the page will be always the same for any user that is visiting your website. Yep. Totally. Let's get into checking out Storyblock. We're going to do two things here. We're going to first start totally from scratch and we're going to build up like a very simple kind of like blog post and then show how to connect to the GraphQL API. And then we're going to spin up one of your pre-made templates and play a little bit with the visual editor, which is a really, really powerful feature of Storyblock that is going to be interesting to get into. But first, let's just go ahead and share my screen. And let's take a look at the, the home page here. So I was like kind of looking at like how do companies kind of like pitch themselves. And so you are saying that you're going to organize your content for the world. It's a very lofty goal there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I think is cool is that what I appreciate and what I think is a very true and good way to put it is that you're for developers and business users. And this is what we're going to kind of explore with these two different ways we're going to go about this is that building up from scratch and connecting to the API is going to be kind of like the developer way to do it. And then the visual editor is more of like the business user way of doing it. So is that kind of dichotomy between those two make sense to you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I so mean, I uh, yeah. sorry, I was going to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, uh, we, we consider the developer experience because the developers are the ones that are going to create the product. And, and uh, lastly, the developers and the development team uh, makes the decision of adopting a service or a product or not. But on the other hand, uh, you, can, you also have to think about the, the people that is going to use the product and the application every day and trying to, to get the, the best user experience that you can. So uh, that's why uh, it, I don't know. It's a good approach to focus both on the developer experience and on the um, final user, let's say. Yeah, and something else that 
I appreciated when I first saw this is you have this spread here of frameworks and I, I'm an aficionado of front end frameworks. So I recognize every single one of these. You have Gatsby, Gridsome, Laravel, Nuxt, Next, React, Svelte, and Vue. So to me, this is screaming, we are framework agnostic <laughs> is the point exactly. here. Exactly. Uh, and not only that, uh, if you go to storyblock.com slash technologies, uh, that's our uh, technology hub where you can see um, we have hubs for the, let's say, I don't know, some of the frequent uh, framework, um, front end frameworks that are used nowadays, like Next, Nux, and Gatsby. But you mm -hmm. can go uh, a little bit down and you will well, see you that. You got Angular and Ruby. Yeah. And Django yeah. and ASP. And ASP <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, what we are trying to do, I, I mean, Sorblog has a, an, e, an API that you can consume from, from any programming language or, or any uh, framework because it's an API. But what we also try to do is to create different SDKs that you can use in your applications to make the work easier for that. So if you go to the different hubs, or, or the different pages for all the languages and frameworks. Obviously, that I'm going to go there. Spelt, so. We have tutorials. Okay, well, you we got to update uh, this one, though, because Sapper's dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I'm, I'm not the Svelte, um, uh, let's say, expert. <laughs> yeah, Sapper's yeah, I... been replaced by Svelte Kit, so you're going to want to update this and do a Svelte Kit tutorial. That, that's a good uh, suggestion, so I, I will note that <laughs> for the team. But yeah, I mean, we have tutorials, we have uh, NPM packages, we have a uh, NuGet package for ASP.NET, depending on the programming language that you want to use, we have, we are trying to make the work easier for the developers offering, uh, well, th that's the developer relations uh, yeah. role, right? I mean, trying to make the developers the, the work easier. Yeah, so now that we have logged in here, this is going to be what you see when you first get in here. So what is a space? Okay, so the idea of the space is a way of organizing your content. What um, the, let's say, the, the more frequent uh, comparison that I want to, to do or, or to use is that a space is a project. I mean... Uh, if you have your blog, you will create one space for your blog. If you have uh, an application, you will create one space for your application. If your application has uh, more than one front end because you are using the same content in a web project and in a mobile application, you can use the same space. So let's say that a space is a project. That, that's what we are going to say by now. Cool. So then once you create your first space, you can create a folder in your space. So what does a folder represent? So, um, well, Storyblock name uh, is like, um, it comes from two parts. Um, the way of organizing the content in, in Storyblock is you can create stories that you can link, for instance, to pages or type of pages in your web application. Um, but again, uh, as uh, Storyblock is front-end agnostic. Uh, it's not, I mean, it, you are not forced to create a, a page, let's say. But let's use the, the concept of page or entity. I mean, you, you can create stories that can be authors, you can, and, and you don't have any page for an author. You can create a, a type of page that is a blog post and using that uh, story type to create the blog post. And on the other hand, we have the blogs which would be the, the components that you will use inside your stories. And the blocks are really like uh, nestable components that you can define with different fields or different components inside of them. You can use um, custom fields. You can use, I don't know, text fields, images, assets, etc. cetera. Yes, yeah, so what I find interesting about this is that these concepts are all hierarchical. Like you have kind of like a big bucket and then you have something that exists within that bucket and then you have kind of like levels that, that go throughout. And so it can be like a little challenging, I think when you first get into a system like this, cause there's like, you're using all this terminology. And it's like, okay, I need to know what a space, I need to know what an entity, I need to like, then you need to map those to something that makes sense to you. Like as a, as a web dev, you know, you have pages and things like that, but it's, 
makes sense because it's hierarchical. So as long as you understand the hierarchy, you can always know what you're actually creating and how it relates to the other things. So it's, it's really clean in that respect because at least it makes sense as its own self-contained system. So do you, do you find that that's like a challenge with people trying to like learn the terminology and like getting spun up with Storyblock? Yeah, probably the, I mean, linking the idea of components with uh, blocks and probably the, the idea of how to organize stories and components or what is, I, I mean, you can define components as content types, which are the structure of the stories that you can create. And on the other hand, the components, you have to define them. Probably getting familiar with that at the beginning is kind of hard, let's say. Not super hard. I mean, I think that those are concepts that when you learn how to use them, you will get advantage of, of that. And about the, the hierarchical uh, organization of the content, um, personally, I, I think that that's a, a really good feature. I mean, I mean, if you work in your computer and, and you are writing because you are a, a writer, uh, probably you tend to use a hierarchical organization with the folders and the documents that you store at, at your uh, computer. So uh, if you use that uh, philosophy, let's say, in your computer, your file system, using the same in a... Uh, in, in the back end of your headless CMS, probably it's a good idea too. Uh, yeah, so you say like thing, a, you have a project in Git or anything like that. Like it's always folders and folders and folders, you know? I, I mean, it's a way of organizing the content um, mm -hmm. and it's easier for you to maintain. It's easier for you to look for certain content. If you have different types of uh, sections in your web application, uh, you know uh, where to find a certain story uh, going to the to the particular uh, folder where you are storing these kind of stories and etc. And on the other hand, probably we're not having uh, the time to to do this because it would take some more time uh, besides the, the example that we are doing. But Storyblock offers some features that you can get advantage using the folder structure. For instance, um, mm -hmm. using Storyblock, you can uh, create custom roles for the users and give a permission to view only or edit or hide the stories that you create inside certain uh, folders, for instance. Right, so you're you're introducing basically our back role based access control and, and that sort of thing baked into the CMS itself. Exactly. I mean, you can have roles like an admin, a developer, an editor, a certain type of develop uh, or editor. Sorry, and that certain type of editor mm -hmm. probably can't uh, see certain stories or can't create certain type of, of stories or documents. And that can be done uh, at a folder level, for instance. I mean, you can say, okay, all the editors don't have access to this particular folder. And on the other hand, another feature that allows, uh, that are allowed to, to, to be used uh, with these folder structures are the translations. I mean, um, you can create multi-language applications with Storyblock and handle the translations of the content uh, using Storyblock itself. And you can set the translation like saying, okay, all the content that is stored in this folder is going to be translated and we will have the same version of, not the same version, I mean the same blog post, let's say, in different languages. And you can handle that at a, at a folder level. Wow. Yeah, that's that's really cool because I once went down this whole rabbit hole with um, Redwood where we were translating the tutorial and like anyone who hasn't ever tried to work on like a multilingual site, like the the amount of like issues that kind of fall out of that like somewhat simple requirement is like it's massive. It's like it's, it's crazy yeah, how much yeah. work goes in, goes into doing something like that. Yeah, that's true. And, and what is cool is that you can consume that uh, later using the, the API. I mean, you can define the languages that you want to be available at your space and, and you can consume them uh, using the, the API in your application, right? Yeah, totally. All right. I'm just going back and looking at my gist real quick because what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a, a post. So when you create your first entity, you can define a specific post, right? Yeah. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to do here. Um, so let me go ahead and go back to sharing. So we have a space and let's delete 
that. And so we want to create an entity. Okay, so this is add new. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is a test entity, and I want to create a post, not a, a blank thing. So a post is going to be something specific, which is going to be basically like a, a blog post. So this is fairly intuitive. This is the title of the post, and this is the intro, and this is the long text. So you got most of the things you would expect from uh, editor. You can do bold, and you could do italic, which I don't know how to spell apparently, and you can do underline. So. This is what you get from most kind of basic blog editors, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, it is not that you are forced to use these uh, story types, let's say. They are suggestions and they are templates that you can use and you can edit on your project. Like you can say, okay, uh, for the posts, uh, for, for the post content type, I want to add these other fields that are not provided right now. And you can start adding them to, to your entities. Uh, or you can even start an entity from the ground and, and define it yourself with the fields that you want to use, with the, uh, the details that you want to add to it. Cool. So after we create our entity, just looking through my notes here, we have... Um, this config, which is how we can kind of define like the name and the slug and any tags and all the kind of stuff that goes along with creating a blog post. And sorry, again, that uh, those different tabs that you have there, like the status config tools, th mm -hmm. those are tabs that you can customize for the, the types. I, I mean, you can add details mm -hmm. to those tabs uh, using the, the components configuration that you have in the, in the menu, in the space menu. I mean, all of that is customized. What we are doing now is offering some uh, frequent options, let's say, for the users if they want to start working right now uh, with some predefined entities and, and customizations. But you can, um, you can edit whatever you want. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I like the kind of configurability here because going back to you want this to be something that's going to be good for both developers and business users is you want to be able to give the configurability to the developers while also giving like a nice kind of simple onboarding experience for people who just want to like edit the content and don't want to deal with all that kind of crazy exactly. back end stuff. I mean, it's, you, you can define it as flexible as you want. If you want to probably um, be more direct and, and say, okay, the, the content editors can create this entity, this entity, and this entity with the role of a, an admin or a developer in your space, you can define that. And for the role of the editor, like leave a couple of options not to overwhelm them when they are using the application. Exactly. And then we're also going to take a look at the GraphQL interface that you have. So you have a really great way of kind of playing around with any sort of stuff that you want to you want to look at. And so I just want to test this real quick, make sure this is going to work. All right, great. Okay, so when you are in, so if, uh, let me make sure real quick here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of share my, my API keys and I'll, I'll delete this, I'll edit this all afterwards. So if you go to your, your settings here, you can then see your, your API keys. And this is gonna be the key that we're gonna to use to access our GraphQL endpoint. So you have this graphical editor here and the way you access it is, is pretty simple. You have this, um, gappy-browser.storyblock.com endpoint, and then you just feed it your, your token, and then you're basically set up, and you have this whole graphical interface here. And if we want to actually, we can then look at our Explorer here. So if anyone's ever messed around with a graphical interface, this is the same kind of thing we're going to be looking at with steps then also. And you can go to the Explorer which can show you what you can query for. So I want to query for my post items and I want to get the content of my post items. And let's just say I want to get the title. 
So if we do that, we're going to see this is the title of the post, which I gave a very descriptive name to. Yeah. <laughs> then we can also see the intro to the post, which is this is the intro. Woo! Well, it's working. <laughs> yep, it is working. Yeah. So this is our kind of endpoint. And then if we also go to um, GraphQL API Storybook, we have this little docs that we see here. And this is if we wanted to connect to it, not just from the graphical, but if we wanted to actually connect to it with uh, something like Insomnia, say. So if we kick it open our Insomnia editor, and it's probably going to show the last thing I did with this. So let me go ahead and clear this history out. And the way we're going to access this is going to be very similar. We're going to have a token, and we want our token to be the same as this here. And then we're sending that through the headers, and then we can send this exact same GraphQL request here. And if we do this and send it, we can then see our data. So this is awesome. This is what you expect. You want to be able to just have an endpoint. You want to be able to connect to it. You want to be able to give it your token, and then you can get the data back. And this is kind of like the whole headless CMS dream kind of right here. It's like very simple to just connect to it and get the data back. Yeah, yeah. The the product team is working on improving the, the GraphQL to be even more uh, fast um, when when you are consuming information from from the API. I I mean they are working on on the GraphQL API. Uh, I mean let's say project um, trying to to improve some some parts. Um, we are also going to release a new version of the application soon. Uh, you can register for the uh, beta program to to be uh, a beta uh, a beta team member let's say and uh, registering on that you will have a previous access to the beta version of the uh, storyblock v2 uh, application and you will be able to to try and to test the different features of the of the new version before we release the the public version of it and well, you you have the chance to win a T-shirt in case that you want a limited mm -hmm. edition of, of a T-shirt with Storyblock logo. Hey man, I can always go for new T-shirts. So I'll there you go. Take a look at that. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want, you you can go to storyblock.com/b2 and you can sign up there for uh, the the beta program. Awesome! Very cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to get ourselves connected to a steps in endpoint. And so this is now that we kind of showed how you can get your endpoint and how to access it with your token, this is going to be the kind of steps and isms part of this. And the way you kind of do this is we're going to create just a blank project folder here, and it's going to be called steps in dash story block. And it's going to have a single folder called schema. And then we're going to have a number of different files here that are going to make up our steps in project. So pretty sure um, you have never used steps in before. Is that correct, Fundo? I've read about that. And I, I used, uh, I, I mean, I had access to the beta version in the past, but I didn't use steps in in the past. Uh, in, sorry, I didn't use steps in for a production project, let's say. But you have, you did play with it though? I played it a little bit. Yeah. Yes. All right, cool. Sweet. I don't know. Last year, I think. Probably. Uh, yeah, it's been around for, for over a year now. So this is. Basically, it's, it's a way to just like spin up a custom endpoint. It's a GraphQL API gateway that you can then feed any other endpoints you want into it. So we're going to be just creating an endpoint here called stepzen-storyblock. And then we have an index.graphql, which is how you can feed in multiple different schemas because the idea is as many GraphQL schemas as you have, you can combine it all into one kind of meta GraphQL schema. And then you have this config.json, which is where you set your keys. So we're setting our token and we're setting it to our token value here. 
And then this is where the really interesting stuff is. So let's first just get the name right here. So what we're doing now is we're going to define a type for our post items. And then we're just going to get the name of those post items. And then the query here is where most of the magic is happening. So we have custom directives that let us hook into different types of endpoints. So that endpoint might be a REST endpoint. It might be a database connection string, or it might be a GraphQL endpoint like we're doing here. And so we're feeding in this endpoint that the story block docs give us. And then we're providing the headers, which is going to be the token. And then that token is being provided through our story block config here in the config.yaml. And so this is all we have to do. We basically just mirror the schema that is already provided to us by story block. And then we can just run steps and start, which is going to kick open an endpoint that we can then query with a query here. And we also have it. So we look at this, it's very, very similar to the, the same editor that we had over here, although we are working on a new one right now. And so we just wanna get back the name of what we did. And there is our entity. This is a test entity, but that's not everything. We actually want to get the, the content as well. And so that's where we would then define a content type. And the content type would have things like the title and the intro, which we would also provide in post item. So we're just going to save, and then this will redeploy for us. And then if we run this whole query here, then we can get back not only the name, but the intro and the title as well. So this is the intro, this is the title of the post. So this shows how we can get hooked up to the API very, very simply with steps in. That's super cool. That's super cool. Yeah, pretty sweet, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I mean, and you can then connect it with using other applications, other services and, and consuming them, right? Yeah, that's, that's the whole idea is that now we can also feed in any sort of endpoints you want. It all goes into this one kind of collated GraphQL. That's why we call it a gateway. And so that's the, yeah. like the, that term doesn't show up anywhere on like our homepage, but I'm actually like describing it to other, other developers. Like it's just, it's just an API gateway is, is kind yeah, of exactly, like, exactly. At the, at the well, and that's yeah. cool. I mean, that, that's cool. A, a good concept. Yeah, no, it's it's great. And it's very um, synergistic with the types yeah. of things that <laughs> exactly. you guys are building. <laughs> yes, great. yes. And um, well, what, what's cool is that GraphQL nowadays is very popular. So uh, given this possibility of consuming different sources mm -hmm. and using GraphQL for all of them, it's kind of a, a cool feature to, to, to keep in mind when creating a project, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole idea of GraphQL is it's like a lingua franca that we can all kind of agree on and use as this one kind of universal language that we can all feed into. Yeah, I agree. All right. So let's take a look at now with the, the visual editor that I know you're, you're really excited about and you think is kind of like the, the main thing that makes Storyblock different from, from other headless CMSs. And so we can create a demo space here. And this is gonna be kind of an example of the, the visual editor. And so like, yes. what is the, the visual editor and how is it different from other CMSs? Cool. So, I mean, if you remember the, the, the uh, screen that you used to fill the information of the post item that you consume uh, through the GraphQL API, you will remember that you were uh, filling um, each uh, field using like a form view, let's say. I mean, you, you had the title, the intro, the, the content itself for the blog post, which is okay. I mean, that's a way of uh, filling the, the information. But another uh, way of doing that is using this visual editor where if you see on the right hand side, you have um, the same form view or, or very similar to the one that you used before. But on the left hand side, 
you have your actual application consuming that content that you are creating or editing. So uh, if you take a look, we have an, a, real, a URL there, as this is a, a demo space that you created. What Storyblock does with this demo space is generating all the stories and the components with uh, dummy data that you can use. And it connects to um, a demo application that Storyblock team created that consumes that content that you are generating in your demo space. So the idea would be not to use this demo application that you can use it, uh, I mean, to try or to test it if you want, but the idea would be it to connect to your real application. Or, I mean, this is working using an iframe, so you can really connect it uh, to uh, an application that is deployed on a server like Vercel or Netlify, for instance, or you can connect that to your local um, instance of your application using localhost uh, 3000, for instance, and, and connect to your local application. But the idea is giving the possibility to the content editors to see how the content that they are creating and editing will look like when the application um, deploys to production or to the staging environment or to the testing environment, for instance. So you don't have to worry about um, doing a deploy to, to see how it looks like. You don't need to, let's say, bother the development team to uh, release a test version of your blog post because you are able to create a blog post inside Storyblock application and see how it will look like inside the same application and connecting to your front end, I mean, to the application that you created using the programming language that you want or the framework that you want. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I love that idea that you can kind of hook it into whatever you want, because having this kind of visual editor experience, it's really important for anyone who's not like a developer. Like we were talking a little bit before the show how I'm not really a CMS person myself. Like I write Markdown and then I ship my Markdown to, to the web. But that's not really that feasible for people who aren't developers who don't know how to write Markdown. If you want to have a website that lots of people can work on, having a visual editor like this, it's, it's really incredible. It's like a, a huge accelerator. It lets anyone get spun up on your project to start work, working on it really easily. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, I mean, again, as I said before, uh, it's you can customize it uh, at the level of you as you want. For instance, if you go to on the right hand side, sorry, if you go to where it says page under call to action and copy, if yeah. you click on page, you are seeing the structure of the story that you are using right now. What you can do there is yeah. to rearrange the blocks that you already have in your page. You can delete blocks. You can add new blocks using some uh, presets that the presets, you, you can create them uh, in this demo space. We are offering some presets, but you can define the ones that you want and start adding the blocks and start editing the content. And again, uh, as this story and this project in particular is done uh, super dynamically, uh, the content editor can enter and can add the blocks that they want and edit every detail, uh, no matter the structure of the page. I mean, look, Right now, what you are doing is creating a complete page with the structure that you want, with the components that you want, and you are yeah, not. And then all we have to do to is feel... just hit publish over here, and then we refresh. And, and there then, you go. Bam, it's there. Like you're we're already live. We're already editing. We have an endpoint we can give to someone. We have like everything we would possibly need to like start working with someone. Exactly. I mean, you you can configure. I don't know publishing and, and, and consuming that right at that moment. You can configure a webhook that we offer. So whenever you click publish, you can call with that webhook to a certain project or, or, or a certain application that is uh, deployed in a hosting service and, I don't know, run a build process, for instance. And the, the idea is like, if you are, imagine that you are a content editor, you can create a blog post, you can review it, you can say, okay, this is my blog post and this is how it's going to look like. You can add different types of blogs, um, displaying images, videos, different uh, formats of paragraph or, or text or different style. 
and you as the content editor are able to see how it will look like. So what you have to do after that is saving and publishing and the blog post is there live um, and you didn't need to, to do any kind of deploy or any kind of change in the code of your application or anything. Yeah, that's all. That's awesome. So closing out here, I'm going to drop just a couple of links here in the chat. We got storyblock.com for anyone who wants to check it out. I also dropped your Twitter as well. Are there any other links that people should know about or how to get in touch with you or anyone on the Storyblock team? Uh, so, well, my Twitter account, Facundo Zurdo, uh, you can write me there. I spend uh, quite a long time on Twitter, so I, I will answer your questions if you have any or if you want to chat about anything. Um, I recommend storyblock.com, which is the, the main uh, page. I recommend storyblock.com slash B2 in case you want to sign up for the B2 beta version and the possibility of winning uh, a limit edition t-shirt that we will send to your home. Uh, I recommend the storyblock.com slash technologies to visit the technology hub so you can um, see the different um, possibilities, not possibilities, but we have several tutorials, several guides, several boilerplates, several um, SDKs, packages that you can use no matter the programming language that you are using. We have like well, I think there are a lot of options and, and a lot of uh, content related to several programming languages. And yeah, I, I think those are the probably the most important links. You can um, reach Storyblock on Twitter. Uh, the, the account is at Storyblock. So um, I think those are the, the links that I would share. Awesome. Yeah, I'll go ahead and drop the, the storybook Twitter as well. That should cover it all. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was this was really fun. I'm looking forward to getting our FSGM episode out as well as so people can listen to that. It's been really great getting to know you and like thank you so much for just like supporting the the full stack jam stack mission and doing this stream with us at StepZen. We we really appreciate it. We think that all of these kind of headless CMSs and different companies that are exposing GraphQL APIs or REST APIs or any kind of APIs. Like this is all stuff that we can work together with to build really cool projects. And, and I love figuring out how to integrate this stuff and just giving you know, more power to developers, to non-developers, to anyone who wants to put stuff on the internet. It's, it's really great. The, the stuff you're working on and very much appreciate getting your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anthony. Thank you for the opportunity. It was really fun and, and I really enjoyed doing this. So, um, yeah, again, thank you very much. Thank you for the for the, the people that is on the other side <laughs> watching this. And yeah, I mean, excited and looking forward for the FS Jam podcast episode and for future uh, contributions, let's say. Yeah, absolutely. And for anyone who wants to check out StepZen, that'll be StepZen.com. Happy to talk with you. Anyone who wants to learn more about how to connect all this crazy GraphQL stuff together. And yeah, I think this will wrap up our stream for today. So feel free to check out the links that we provided. And anyone who wants to learn more about any of this stuff, either myself or Fakundo, will be happy to answer your questions. All right. Later. Bye.